Hi, this is E. David Crawford. Just recently, we held our 31st International Prostate Cancer Update meeting in Snowbird. We had nine sessions in the arena of prostate cancer. I'm going to start by reviewing the first session. My colleagues at the meeting will review the remainder of the eight sessions. So let's go ahead and begin uh, with this. The session reviews are going to begin now. My conflicts of interest are on this slide here. So this is the actual program for the men's health part, the first uh, session of the meeting. I'm going to uh, discuss the present presentations by doctors Mark Moyad, La Rosa, myself, Garnick, Wendy Pogue, and then a really great panel that was held during this session. All right, the, the first presenter was Dr. Mark Moyad, who's been a frequent person that uh, has come to this meeting probably 25 times or more over the years. And Mark is an international expert in complementary alternative medicine. This year, Mark focused on uh, a number of things, uh, and including things that were heart healthy and diet and what impact that had. He started out by focusing on lessons we have learned from breast cancer and cardiovascular disease studies. And these apply to prostate. He talked about one uh, study in breast cancer, a win-win study as it was called, which did dietary intervention weight loss and had a positive outcome on survival rate and progression of disease. Another one was negative. Um, but that uh, trial, even though it was larger, did not have all the same interventions. He talked about um, a, another trial, uh, Success C, in which uh, diet and exercise played a role. So the message and, and a number of other studies that he discussed during his presentation was that a heart healthy diet is a prostate healthy diet and you can have impact on a number of things. He did talk about some studies that were done. Uh, in particular, Dr. Uh, Parsons did this meal study, uh, which failed to show any difference. Um, there uh, were, have been other studies done with vegan diets and lycopenes and, and things like that. Uh, and sometimes these things that, that uh, by themselves don't work, such as lycopene, perhaps are just a surrogate for a healthy uh, diet in general. Um, and he also talked about metformin. So, and in conclusion, Mark Menon that for an injection was just FDA approved or soon to be. Uh, and for weight loss, that may be important. Uh, he concluded that, that complementary alternative medicine should not be generalized as all good or all bad that you need to study them. We've studied many of them in prostate cancer, vitamin E, selenium, and things like that. Uh, and so again, the take home message is what's heart healthy is prostate cancer and prostate healthy and can have significant impacts on what uh, occurs with your disease. The next presentation was by Dr. Paco La Rosa, who is a uh, associate professor uh, pathology at the University of Colorado. Um, Paco talked about the Center for Human Simulation, uh, which was really started by Mark Spritzer. Uh, and basically, this was the sort of the, the visible human project uh, where he did get uh, live sort of autopsies um, uh, or warm autopsies, not live, uh, and did serial sections of the body as you see on the right, leading to uh, a lot of great findings, but we're focusing on the prostate and what was done here. Dr. LaRosa carried that on to the work that he did and my colleagues at the university did on 3D reconstruction of the prostate. And they talked about the value of 3D reconstruction of the prostate in determining what the target is for focal therapy. Uh, and you've got to have a, a good shot uh, to, um, in fact, um, and, and know where you're shooting to, to get rid of the disease. And 
So it's ready, aim, fire, not ready, fire, aim. And uh, Paco uh, relayed how this, uh, the importance of this. So this is an example of a 3D model that was reconstructed from the needles. As you can see here, the needle tracks that are done, it's usually um, done at five millimeter intervals. The next presentation was one I made on the controversies regarding screening for prostate cancer. And basically, um, the, the summary is that 90% of PSAs are done by family practice doctors um, and that we confuse them with a lot of different PSA cutoffs, a lot of different tests. And it'd be nice to have a PSA cutoff that's reasonable. We present in the day that less than 1.5 is a good cut point and that 70% of men in, in screening will have a PSA of less than 1.5. Of course, that depends on your age group. If you take an older age group, it's going to be uh, higher than that. Why? Because they have more prostate cancer. But in general, if you take men age 45 up to the end of screening, less than 1.5, you have about 70% of them or less that, and these people don't need anything done. Uh, based on our study from the Henry Ford database, uh, less than 0.5% of these people will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the next uh, five years. However, if your PSA is greater than 1.5, then that's a danger zone. Uh, it doesn't mean you need a biopsy, but uh, it is a danger zone. That means that this could be due to BPH. It could be due to prostate cancer. Consider a referral to a urologist, or in fact, the family practice doctor may do th things like prostate size, AUA symptom score, repeat the prostate or PSA in a few months, um, or in fact, consider a molecular marker. And we discussed the roles of the molecular markers. 5, 4K, select MDX, and there's a whole host of others. And these, if they're low risk, you're back into routine screening. And if you're high risk, then that can lead to consideration of an MRI biopsy or things like that. So the way forward with screening is we need a simple message for family practice doctors, and we need sort of a simple algorithm on the way forward. There's lots of these out there, unfortunately. Many of these algorithms are complicated and not easily remembered. Dr. Mark, uh, uh, Dr. Mark Garnick from uh, Beth Israel in Boston, who was the person who was key in the development of luprolide and many other things in prostate cancer, um, is also a author for uh, assessment for uh, uh, ASCO and for uh, uh, medical oncology uh, trainees and gave a nice review of what was going on in prostate cancer. Uh, and one of the things that, that came out and was presented in Mark's presentation is seen on this slide. If we look, what we see here is there is a marked difference in um, outcomes and death rates in men who have live in an area that has poor medical care. And if you look at mortality rates for prostate, bladder, kidney, testis, and even penile cancer, what we see is a higher death rate. Um, the final thing was an outstanding panel, uh, which was moderated by the president of LUGPA, uh, Dr. Jonathan Henderson from Louisiana. We've been very fortunate at the, with the International Prostate Cancer Meeting to have an association with LUGPA for the past four years. And they had a very nice educational panel on the government policies and outcomes. And uh, what, uh, what's quite clear is that we have to have uh, our views uh, uh, in front of public officials. Uh, they talked about lobbying and how one does that, uh, talked about the success of agencies working together in organizations like the AUA and LUPA and others who uh, have an interest in promoting better care and particularly in this our meeting, Better Men's Health. Um, and to really how to uh, 
interact with legislators and activity and advocacy and so forth. There are a lot of things happening right now with reimbursement, with, um, with telemedicine, telehealth, um, and value-based care, and many, many other things that uh, groups like LUGPA are representing our interest and spending a lot of time, effort, and uh, financial uh, support to, um, and to, to help create a better environment for prostate cancer medicine in general. That was a great, uh, a, a, a great panel and uh, one that we all enjoy listening to and we thank them. So the first session went very well, a lot of great points. And um, we thank all the presenters who were uh, present for this uh, first session. Thank you. Thank you.